Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. We're going to be talking about an intermittent fasting guide for beginners, how to get started with intermittent fasting. I just noticed last week in the live stream we had a lot of new people. So I want to go over like just a basic like starter program for over the next four weeks to get you, you know, get your jump started for the new year. My dearly beloved is bringing me my coffee, which is great. I already had too much coffee this morning. You know, let me lower this. So we'll go through this. I have about 10 slides. We'll go through all the slides. We'll answer all your questions in general. And um, obviously Super Bowl Sunday. So I'm really excited about that. Actually, my wife's company is from Kansas City. So we're going to be rooting for Kansas City, even though I do like the Philadelphia Eagles as well, too. I love that movie, Invincible. You know that. Um, that was a great movie. All right, let's jump right into it. Let me make sure everything is working good. Let's first go over an overview of um, exactly what we're going to talk about today. Oh, that's good. So I think the comments are coming in, which is nice. We have um, Nicholas is here, which is great. Thanks for showing up. Cool. Blue sky. Good morning. Thanks for showing up. This is going to be great. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm still trying to get used to these contacts. It's so bizarre. That's why I was about five minutes late today. It took me a little longer <laughs> to get these contacts in my eyeballs. You know, it's really incredible. I had like a weird thing happen with my contacts. I I literally like remove contacts. I must have had two contacts in one eye at one point because in the middle of the night one night this week, my eyes started bothering me. You know, I go down to the in the bathroom and I pulled out a contact. I mean, it's so bizarre. I must have got stuck in the butt of my eye, which is so bizarre. Hey, Harry, it's here. Thanks, Harry, for showing up. I appreciate it. Hey, good evening. I guess late where you guys are, huh? And Chris is here. My man Chris is always here, doing so great. Good morning, Mike. This sound is great. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. And once again, we're going live, I think, on Facebook, and we're going live on YouTube. So hopefully everything will be good. Nicholas said, I've gained one pound, but I think it's muscle. Well, sounds good, Nicholas. My forearms are getting much bigger. Very cool. Okay, so let's go over what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about an intermittent fasting beginner guide, like a four-week starter program, how to get you started. And the first thing we'll talk about, I know there's going to be a little bit of review for some of the um, people who show up every single week, but it's still fun to kind of review. But if you're new, I think you're going to get, 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 get like a real lot out of it. We'll go over what is intermittent fasting. What's the difference between intermittent fasting versus time-restricted eating? We'll go over like exactly what, what it means to be in a fasted state. Like what does it mean to fast? Then we'll go over just some popular types of intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating. And then the meat and guts of this, of this whole uh, presentation is going to be a four-week program to get you started. And I made it like really easy for people to get started. Like the first week, you'll see when we go through the when we go through the slides, they're gonna be so easy. And I don't have people really changing their diet. And it's interesting because initially what made intermittent fasting, time restricted eating so popular is that people loved it because they didn't have to change their diet. They kept on eating all the foods that they liked, their favorite foods, even some junk food and some trigger type foods, but they were in a calorie deficit because they were giving themselves a shorter eating window. So we're going to kind of ad address that too in this presentation. So let's go over like simply what is, oh, I have my bad camera angle there again. There we go. And I think I lost my slide. So let me, I'm going to copy this. This happened last time too. Interesting. Let me pop this in here. I think this is something going on with the new software. Slide number two. Okay, what is intermittent fasting? Really simple. It's just um, it's just a, like a mindset or a way of compressing your eating window. Unfortunately, it's interesting. I, I listened to a presentation on LinkedIn this week. I forgot the guy's name. He was he's another like like keto carnivore intermittent fasting guy, and he said something that really stuck with me. He said that most people eat anywhere between seventeen to 23 times per day, which is really incredible when you think about it. And we're not talking about big meals, but most people really do like graze all day long, constantly sn snacking. And unfortunately, when you do that, obviously you're eating more, your calories are up, plus you're getting those spikes in insulin. We're gonna talk about insulin and storage hormone a lot in this presentation too. So when you when you when you get involved in intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating, you're pretty much just compressing your eating window. So instead of eating 17 to 23 meals, over like a 17, 18 hour eating period, like the only time you're not eating is when you're sleeping, right? Compressing your eating window is a form of intermittent fasting time restricted eating. So you're cycling between eating and fasting, really simple, right? The, um, the difference between intermittent fasting and time restricted eating, some people call it time restricted feeding. 
is that intermittent fasting, you do it intermittently. You don't do it every day. Let's say you're doing um, a 24-hour fast, which uh, that's extreme. We're not going to be talking about that too much in this presentation. Say once a week, that will be intermittent fasting, right? But if you're doing something like a 16-8, which we're going to talk a lot about, where you fast for 16 hours, taking all your calories with an eight-hour eating window, and you do that every single day, that would be time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding. But when I, when I give this presentation today, just I'm, I'm going to say, sometimes I'm going to say intermittent fasting, sometimes I'm going to say time-restricted eating. Just get the idea that, that this is what I'm talking about, pretty much. And, and, I don't, and we're not going to focus on extended fast, meaning that we're not going to focus on fasting beyond 36 hours. We're not, we're not, we're not even going to be doing a 36-hour fast in the first three weeks. So keep that in mind. And what I consider an intermittent fast or time-restricted eating is li as little as 12 hours. If you fast for 12 hours, in my opinion, that's a great way to reduce calories, great way to improve your insulin sensitivity. So 12 to 36 hours is going to be the realm of, the, of this four-week program that we're going to be focusing on. Let's see what we got here. Hey, Gene's in the house. Hey, Gene, how we doing? Hey, Mike, I wonder if intermittent fasting is, is good against inflammation. I think it is. I even had a, a little note of that. See, sometimes I almost did it for this presentation. I had a bunch of studies, and one study was on inf inflammation, and I decided to not go with it because I'm always looking, like when I'm doing these live streams, I can see how many people in the room now. Right, right now, I see we got 15 people. Whenever I start talking about the studies, the people seem to drop off, you know? So I don't want to bore people with the studies, but yes, I do think that there is improvements in inflammation and reductions in inflammation. And it has to do with a number of things. First of all, when you're just when you're thinner, when you're lighter and you're healthier, I think you're gonna have less inflammation throughout your whole body. And that's a big factor. And that's also, I don't want to mislead anyone. So many of the benefits of intermittent fasting, it really is calorie restriction. And then once you're thinner and lighter and healthier, you're getting so many of these health benefits. I just think intermittent fasting is such a great way to get people to eat less. I do like it better than just restricting calories throughout the whole day. And I'll explain that in much more detail as we go. So that's what we got here. We got, um, we got Chris, Chris Davis. I lost four pounds this week. Whoa, on a 36 hour fast, fasting eating program this week that we talked about last and he said, oh, that's really, oh, that's great, Chris. I'm so excited. So last week, we we did a live stream talking about alternate day fasting, how to go from like an aggressive fasting strategy where you fast for 36 hours, then either you eat, you know, and, and then you and then within a 12-hour eating window, you're taking all your calories. You're kind of eating every other day, and there's a couple ways of doing it. The strict way of doing it is to take in no calories for 36 hours, but most of the studies on alternate day fasting say, you know, you can take in 25% of your normal calories. You can take in like five, six, 700 cal calories, depending upon how big you are. I th I'm not sure which one you did, Chris, but um, really cool. That's great. I, I love alternate day fasting. I think it is, it is a great, but aggressive strategy. Okay, this is Jeff. New Year's, I watched football bowl games all day and gave myself permission to eat whatever I wanted. I still didn't eat 17 times in a day. That sounds good. Good. I know. I don't know if that, I think I was exaggerating a little bit, but I, I have like looked it up in the past. It may not be 17, 23, but it's a lot. Most people are just constantly, every time they walk into the kitchen, they grab something. And you know, you ever go to people's homes? I see it all the time where they literally have bowls of like M&Ms or bowls of little like treats and snacks throughout the entire house, like 24 hours, seven days a week, not like on a Super Bowl party. So many people unfortunately live like that and they don't even realize it. Like another thing, so many people over the years have contacted me and said, you know, Mike, I'm eating 15, 1200 calories, I'm not losing weight. They don't realize that they're really not just eating 12, 1500 calories, they're really eating much more because when they're just grabbing things, they're not even aware of it. People wake up in the middle of the night, grab a cookie go back to sleep, go to the bathroom, go back to sleep. You know, it's really incredible. Okay, so let's go over, okay, let's go over the next slide. Okay, so let's go over exactly what is, let me see, this is slide number four. Let's go, what is, okay, intermittent fasting. It's interesting, these slides got a little bit out of whack today. Okay, what is, Fasting, like, like what does fasting consist of? Just so people understand exactly what it is. Like some people define fasting, this is where it can get a little confusing because some people define fasting as just like a rise in blood sugar. And I made a note saying fat and coffee, like the bulletproof coffee. I would define fasting as just when you're really taking in no calories. 
but I, I have a little bit of a leeway in my opinion. I think you can take in five, maybe 10 calories. Even a cup of coffee has two or three calories in it, right? Maybe like I said, I'm into that lemon water, you know, squeezing lemon juice in water, which actually lowers blood sugar. Research has shown may have a calorie or two. In my opinion, that's still being in a fasted state. But there are people who define fasting, like the guy I think Dave Aspari, if I've been pronouncing his name right, he wrote the Bulletproof um, Coffee. Like who who put fats in like their coffee in the morning? Who'll put butter or MCT oil? Those medium chain, you know, the medium chain um, oils, because they feel that even though it has calories. It's not spiking blood sugar. It's not spiking insulin. So a lot of it has to do with what you consider to be in a fasted state. In my opinion, I still think those fats break a fast. Plus, I don't want to add calories and fats to my diet by putting like butter in my coffee or putting MCT oil. You know, because it's you know you can easily convert those into ketones. They go to the liver. So when it comes to this presentation, we're going to talk about being in a fasted state. Is almost no calories, maybe five or ten calories, something like that. Now, obviously, when you're in a fasted state, you can drink all these no-calorie liquids. I really recommend you stay, stay really well hydrated. You can drink black coffee, green tea. You can even, in my opinion, put like just a dab of half and half in your coffee. If it just if if, if you find like black coffee just to be so like un unpalatable, you, know, you just can't do it. It's just too bitter. Put in just like a half a teaspoon of half and half. I don't think that's gonna mess up your fast. I even heard. I even remember Mark Sesson. He's another famous guy. He wrote the um, Primal Blueprint books. I read all his books. I really like him. He talks about even when he fasts, he'll even put one sugar in his coffee with a little bit of cream in the morning, and he's still considered to be in a fasted state because the calories are just so low. I think you're okay with that. Plain tea, you know, I love mineral water because it's high in minerals. I always push Pellegrino because Pellegrino is so high in magnesium. The adequate intake of magnesium for the day is about 400 milligrams. Most people don't come close a liter of Pellegrino, over 50 grams of magnesium. So I love like drinking Pellegrino with like fresh lime or fresh lemon in the morning. Apple cider vinegar is another little bit of a hack when you're fasting, pretty much no calories. Actually helps control blood sugar. I think you can do things like that when you're fasting. Some people like to put a pinch of salt too to keep their electrolytes up. I think when it comes to these shorter fasts though, these like 18 hour fasts, 16 hour fasts, I don't necessarily think you need the salt, but you could. I think it's fine if it, if it. Sometimes people, it helps them with appetite, putting a little pinch of salt. But you really do want to stay really properly hydrated during your fasting window. So for this presentation, we're going to look at fasting as not like no fats, no oils. We're not going to look at blood sugar. We're going to just look at it as just, just about no calories. And I also made a note talking about like sweeteners, artificial sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit. I think you're okay with that. The artificial sweeteners I kind of would avoid. Some people do feel in some research has shown that you do get a little bit of a spike in insulin even though there are no calories. So for some people that leads to hunger. It's a really, really up to you. Like if you want to put a little stevia or like monk fruit or something like that in your black coffee in the morning or you maybe you like um, unsweet nice tea and you want to put something like that. I think, I really think it's okay unless it makes you ravenously hungry, which for some people it really does. So th that would be my determinant whether you use the, use the sweeteners or not. Okay, so let's go over all the different types of um, intermittent fasting. I, get, I see I got all these different camera angles. I think we got some, some more questions though here. Let's see. Hey, Quill, Quill is here. Oh, thanks, thanks for showing up. Hey, Mike, going to watch this stream tomorrow. Thanks in advance. I appreciate it. I think it's late with, like, with, late with Quill is too. He's been posting some good stuff on Instagram. I saw a good picture of him there. This is Jeff. Unsweetened almond milk has 30 calories in the entire cup. So the amount I put in my coffee is less than that. Yeah, not, I mean, right. I think if you if you can kind of stay under 10 calories, like five calories, even even myself, let me show you today. Like my wife brought me this cup of coffee. I already had a couple of espressos. I don't know if you can see the color of this coffee. I think my wife put just a teeny bit, just a dab of half and half. Sometimes I do that. You know, I don't put any sugar. To me, I, I, lo I love my coffee like this, but I drink it black a lot too. Like espresso, I like black. Mm. And I'm I'm a little bit more lenient than some other people who are really into this fasting thing. I mean, what's five to ten calories in my opinion? I don't think it's doing you much harm at all. And you have to enjoy your life, right? <laughs> a little bit. Hey, Steve, see you. My man, Steve. Oh, thanks so much for showing up, Steve. Super Bowl Sunday too, right? I'm sure you're going to watch the game. Curious to know who's coming over. I'm dying to talk to you. I got to give you a phone call. I'm going to call you really soon. I keep on saying that, but I really want to. to see how everything's going. Okay, so let's go over some popular types 
of intermittent fasting. And this is back to like Gene's, Gene's thing with um, inflammation. I, 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 when I initially did this presentation, I had studies on all these different types, but I don't want to lose too many people. So let's, let's blast through it. So in my opinion, I think a 12 to a 14 hour fast is intermittent fasting or time restricted eating if you do it, do it every day. So many people will get tremendous benefit, I think, with a 12 to a 14 hour fast. There's even, I had one study on unfortunately women who had breast cancer who, who were doing like a 14 hour fast every day, time restricted eating. And the reoccurrence of breast cancer was dramatically reduced from the women who were fasting just 14 hours a day. So there's definitely some great benefits, I think, for sure. And then the most popular still is a 16-8, which I love, where you fast for 16 hours, taking all your calories with an eight-hour eating window. And we'll go into greater detail about that because that's, that's, the, that's the gist of, of this four-week program. I know it could be a little confusing, too. We're going to talk about it a lot. Should you skip breakfast? Should you skip, skip dinner? What are the pros and cons? But we're going to go into that. The next level would be an 18-6, which I used to do all the time, fast for 18 hours taking all your calories within a six hour eating window, you know, two more hours in a fasted state. You know, when I was eating like really low carb, I would dip into ketosis for those last couple of hours, meaning that my liver was burning body fat, converting me to ketone bodies, which is kind of cool. A 20 hour fast, four hour, four hour eating window, 24. That's another, another popular uh, fasting approach. I think there was a book written many years ago called The Warrior Diet which was something like that where you only give yourself a four hour eating window. Obviously more aggressive as we go through. And it's, it's interesting because it's somewhat counterintuitive in that. Most people initially when they look at this say, oh my God, how can I, how can I um, fast for 20 hours? If I only have four hours to eat, I'm gonna gorge myself. But the research has shown, and just from my personal experience of doing this for like over a decade and putting hundreds of people on these, these different intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, like protocols, people eat less. If you only give yourself a four hour eating window, you're gonna be eating less. I'm not saying that's an approach you wanna do every day, more of a short term strategy or intermittent strategy, right? Then obviously a 24 hour fast straight up, love that every now and then. I do do 24 hour fasts, you know, somewhat regularly. You know, we're not gonna be talking about that today, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Then there's the OMAD diet, the one meal a day diet, which I do love. That's typically what I do on Sundays. Typically it's done, you fast for 23 hours, taking all your calories within a one hour eating window. Obviously you're gonna be restricting calories that day, right? How much food can you eat in one hour, right? Also alternate day fasting, like, like Chris was talking about, which he just lost four pounds this week after already losing 40 pounds, which is incredible. Where you fast for 36 hours, taking all your calories with 12 hours, it's just pretty much like eating every other day, right? You can almost say it's a little bit like the OMAD diet, but the OMAD diet, you would lose an hour every day if you keep on doing it, right? And then I always like to make a note, uh, two meals a day. And I'm a big believer in the two mad diet. You know, it may not be like, for example, if you're eating breakfast and you're eating dinner, and maybe you're only in a fasted state for 12 hours, it may not be quite as effective as giving yourself like a two meals a day with an eight hour eating window, but I still think that is an incredible way to reduce calories just eating two meals a day, even if you're eating like an early breakfast and a dinner. But we're gonna talk about that a lot too in this whole thing. Let's see what Jeff's got today. Today, I'm doing about 22.2. You know, Jeff, I'm probably doing 21.3 today. Okay, this is what Jeff means by 22.2. Obviously, he's gonna fast for 22 hours, taking all his calories within a two hour eating window. I'm assuming he's gonna probably watch the Super Bowl and he's gonna probably eat and have fun. What I'm doing today is I've been fasting all day. I, I, you know, I made these slides up this morning. I'm gonna go take my walk. Um, I, think, I think there's a good chance my brother and his family might be coming over, my parents are coming over, so I'm probably gonna give myself a three hour eating window. I'll probably drink some light beer today too. It's a football game, right? My wife is so excited to see her team in the Super Bowl, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I love that strategy anytime there's a big event. I love it for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for New Year's, for the 4th of July. If you know you're gonna be partying, having some fun, fast for 20 hours, give yourself a three or four hour eating window. It's a great way to do it, for sure. The only thing I'd be careful about if you're gonna be drinking alcohol, don't start pounding drinks on an empty stomach. You know, eat a little bit something first <laughs> before you start drinking. But don't drink excessively anyway, right? Let's see what Chris got. Back to Chris Davis. Me, uh, me and, and, and my wife, Okay, me and wife did a three mile walk yesterday and a three mile walk this morning in a fancy state. Fantastic, I love it. You know, if you got the people who show up every single week know me so well, I'm such a big believer 
in walking in a faster state like first thing in the morning. Besides the fact that you are burning a little bit more fat being in a faster state, I love getting outside, having the sunlight hit your eyes. Great for your circadian rhythm, which I keep on talking about. Your circadian rhythm, which is your 24-hour internal clock, regulates just about every process within the body, your genes, your hormones, the enzyme. There's so many reactions. Just, that's why it's so good to wake up first thing in the morning, right? Drink, drink your lemon water. If you want a cup of coffee, fine. Get outside, have the sunlight hit your eyes. It jump starts everything for you. That's why it's good to wake up, go to sleep the same time every day. It's probably good to eat the same times every day as well. As soon as sunlight hit your eyes, it jump starts everything. That's, and that's also what gives you your vitamin D, right? You can t- I think taking vitamin D3 is probably a good thing too, but I don't, I don't really need it. My D levels are always good because I'm outside all the time and I love the sun. You know, I love being out in the sun. So let's go over... Um, so let me make this slide a little bit bigger. You know, I, I I may next time I do this, I may I may try it too. You know what? Yeah, you ever see people go live or, or do a presentation where they make their body really small and make the slides really big? I may try that next time to see if everyone sees it better. And then then and then we'll do a vote to see what we like more. And also this program today, we talked about it last week on the live stream that I was gonna do like a challenge. I had a little bit of trouble figuring out the technology of doing that. I'm still looking into it. But today's presentation can be a challenge if you're new to intermittent fasting. You can start with this four-week program. And every Sunday when I go live, if you want to tell me how you're doing, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it, which will be great. Okay, so let's go over the benefits of intermittent fasting. Like number one, for sure, in my opinion, it's just an excellent way to reduce calories without necessarily having to count calories. Because even though I think calorie counting works, it works incredibly well for like bodybuilders and physique athletes because they're so motivated. And if they're hungry, they don't care. They just, you know, they just stick to whatever the calories and macros. Macros are your protein, fats, and carbs, and they just do it. But for like most of the population, that's why people say counting calories doesn't work even though it does is because people just don't stick to it. It's just too hard, too tedious. But intermittent fasting, that's why I like it so much. And just from putting like hundreds, if not thousands of people on different diets and programs, there's nothing I've found over the years that works better to make people eat less food than to say, you know what, take in all your calories within an eight-hour eating window. Take in all your calories within a six-hour eating window. Like 90% of the people, there's always an exception. There's some people who gorge themselves and they just do. But most people will definitely eat less. And to me, that's the biggest benefit. Besides all these other benefits we're gonna talk about, you will be eating less calories when you give yourself a smaller eating window. And then the other big one that I highlighted in blue is, is increase in insulin sensitivity, which is so important. You know, I'm sure you've heard the term insulin resistance, where people become resistant to insulin. Now, how, the, how it works, how insulin works is, let's say you have a big meal. Let's say you're having a Super Bowl meal, right? You're having, you know, chicken wings and you're eating hamburgers and you're having chips and nachos, whatever. You know, whatever calories you're not burning right then, those excess calories have to be stored away, right? Because the body doesn't like when blood sugar gets too high. Your blood sugar gets over about, you know, like a teaspoon of sugar. That's all it is, five grams. The body says, oh my God, the pancreas has to release insulin, which is the main storage hormone, to store away those excess calories, right? So the the pancreas produces insulin, right, the lower blood sugar. Where do those calories go? Carbohydrates go in the muscle and the liver in the form of glycogen, fat goes into fat cells. But when you've been chronically overweight, let's say you've been overweight for a decade, you're 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight and you've been there 10 years, 15, 20 years, your body has been just cranking out insulin excessively, like every day, especially if you're eating like those people I said before, 17, 23 times a day and you're overeating, your body just cranking out insulin, insulin, insulin. Eventually, the body says, you know, insulin just does, does, doesn't work as well. It's not letting those, those excess calories be stored away properly. So what happens is your blood sugar goes up. You want it with pre-diabetes. You want it with adult onset of type 2 diabetes. You can't control blood sugar. And then you get a slew of problems. Then you wind up with like metabolic syndrome and all these different issues, you know, like high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Big thing, you know. So, when you're in a fasted state, let me get this a little bit better. I like the camera there. When you're in a fasted state, insulin is is so low, and the lower you can keep insulin throughout the day, the better your body will respond to insulin when you do eat. So, it, that's what fasting does. That's why fasting 
increases your insulin sensitivity. And this would be my argument, and I know people would debate this for me. Even if you're eating, let's say you're eating the same amount of calories. Let's say you're eating 2,000 calories a day, and you do it only in, say, an eight-hour eating window. So for 16 hours, insulin is relatively very low. You're increasing your insulin sens sensitivity. As opposed to taking 2,000 calories in, in 10 little meals where you're constantly spiking insulin, in my opinion, and the research is somewhat mixed on this, but this is my opinion, I think you'll increase your insulin sensitivity more if you just take in all your calories in a shorter eating window. So you're getting like the best of both worlds, you know? So, and it's somewhat debatable. I, you know, I have found a couple of studies, not many. I found two studies, one on weightlifters who, for example, ate the same amount of calories, right? Same amount of protein, same amount of carbs, same amount of fats, exactly the same diet. One group of, of the bodybuilders, these are guys that were working out three days a week, like real weightlifters, experienced weightlifters. One group like ate three meals a day, the same meals, like one and eight in the morning, one like 12 in the afternoon, one say seven in the evening. So much spread out compared to someone who did a typical 16-8. And the people who did the 16-8, even with the same amount of calories, same macros, lost more body fat, lower triglycerides, just had a better response. It may not be like a normal study because these are weightlifters. Weightlifters are already incredibly insulin sensitive because whenever you're lifting weights, you're burning carbohydrates and you know it's a really good thing. And I've also found another study on cyclists like a, with a similar result. Like even eating the same amount of calories, they, they lost more fat, they had better health numbers. But typically, that isn't my general opinion. My general opinion is calories totally matter. But if you can take them in in a shorter eating window, in my opinion, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're fasted, right? You're burning stored energy. You're increasing insulin sensitivity. And there's, I don't want to get too technical, but there's something called like the insulin glucagon relationship. There are also hormones that are released that will actually raise blood sugar. And that insulin like, you know, glucagon ratio is really, really important. Okay, now another thing, um, and some of the other benefits is that it lowers blood pressure. And this is more though for those extended fasting. See, in my opinion, that's why I put, made a little note, weight loss. You know, when you lose weight, whether you did it with intermittent fasting, whether you did it with calorie restriction, whether you did it any way you can, you're going to get these health benefits, like your blood pressure kind of come down. That's one of the best things you can do for elevated blood pressure is just to lose more weight. That's why Chris, I know Chris was borderline. I think you may, you know, losing four pounds this week, your blood pressure might be in the normal range literally already. You know, but there are some studies, especially on alternate day fasting, that has shown dramatic improvements in blood pressure. You know, even with, even with some weight loss, but from the alternate day fasting. There are some studies also show that the increase in human growth hormone, you know, and things like that, but these are more the longer fast. It's so interesting how the body works. And this is back to like ancestral living. I like that whole process of thinking how our ancestors survived and lived, right? Let's say you, you know, the whole thing, let's say you, right, you're hunting, there's, there's no food. You've heard these stories before, right? You're hunting, you know, you haven't eaten in 24, 72 hours. You know, you're like super hungry. You know, you're in ketosis to keep your mind really, really clear. What the body does is, is that when you're in these extended fasted states, is that it increases like human growth hormone, things like that, to, main, to help maintain your muscle mass. So you, you know, so you don't just fall apart. You don't starve. Obviously, if you take that too far and you don't eat for like seven, eight days, things get messed up. But that's what some people like to do like, 48, 72, three, four, five day fast, you get a big, big spike in human growth hormone. But when it comes to these 14, 15, 18 hour fast, I don't think you're gonna get too much of a spike. Also lowers triglycerides, a whole bunch of studies that shows that even from the shorter fast and all the fast in between, also correlated though with weight loss in my opinion too. And this is a big one. And this is a big one that's, I don't know if you, I would say it's debatable, but, it, but it's really hard to determine like um, how much autophagy is being upregulated. See, autophagy is, is somewhat of a never-ending process. Even someone who doesn't fast, doesn't work out, is still gonna get some autophagy. What it is is that this is when the body like recycles and like, re and, like fixes and repairs weak and damaged organelles, say mitochondria, things like that. People who are into longevity think that fasting is really great for autophagy, it upregulates it, and it helps longevity. It seems like the longer you fast, the more upregulation of autophagy you get to a point of diminishing returns. Like when you're doing a 14, 16 hour fast, are you getting some autophagy? Maybe a little bit. In my opinion, I think if you're very, 
like low carb and dipping maybe into ketosis, you will probably get autophagy quicker on the shorter fast. I know it gets a little confusing, but you know, either either when when you're when you're in a fed state and mTOR, you know, the growth signaling is high, autophagy is low, and vice versa. When you're in a fasted state and repairing everything, AMPK things like that, autophagy kind of kicks up. But it's somewhat debatable. And I recently heard that guy that I follow all the time, the Harvard doctor, saying, ah, he's not even sure how much autophagy you get from these shorter fasts. So kind of hard to say. But some people do fast just for autophagy. And it's interesting. I hope I'm not going too much into the science because I see as soon as I start talking about about the science, people start dropping off like like wildfire. So let's see. Let's answer some questions and then we'll um we'll keep this thing going. Okay, let's see what Chris. Let's see. Um, okay, hey, hey, hey. Thanks for showing up. This is cool. Hey, Mike. Always, always, always great when I catch your show. Just starting to lift some weights after pushing, after pausing for many years. Any suggestions regarding how many hours for a novice to fast? Hey, John, John Venus. I didn't realize that was you, John. I, I didn't realize the um, the logo. You know, like the headshot. That's really cool. Yeah, John. I I would do exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm glad I'm glad you're lifting weights and, and getting back in the gym or to working out at home. I think it's wonderful. I think this presentation could be great for you because it's gonna really ease you into it. Like the first week, you'll see when I get to a slide or two. I don't know if you want to hang in there that long, but it, it, like the first week is just like a 12 to 14 hour fast. The second week's gonna be like a 16 hour fast with no change in diet. The third week we're gonna start changing the diet. The fourth week you're gonna be like on your way. I think the key is to ease into it. But if you've been fooling around with the fasting and following some of my stuff and you want to go right to 16.8, I think that's a great way to start. Fast for 16 hours, taking all your calories with an eight-hour eating window. I would just start there. That's a great way to start too. But this is what I'm going to be talking about today is even more gradual than that, which I think would be great for you. Let's see, Jeff. Okay, this is Jeff. Yes, I use old folks. Yes. Us old folks have trouble seeing the small type on the slides. Yes, I. So you, you do like the idea of me, of me maybe blowing this up. Okay, maybe I'll try that next time. I'll try why I make myself really small. I just thought it would look ugly, and then I make the slides big. But I can definitely try that. Hey, hey, Mary, how you doing? Thanks for showing up. Just joined. We'll go back later to the beginning. I'm one of the new people. Oh, great, cool. I think you're gonna really like this. I think you're gonna get a lot out of it, Mary, for sure. Let's see, Jean. Okay, Jean. Uh, my blood pressure is 155 over 95. When I weigh 290, now at 245, I'm 140 over over 85. Still needs improvement. Yeah, but that's a tremendous improvement, Gina. And in my opinion, I always say this, I'm not a doctor, so don't take my advice over your doctors. In my opinion, Gene, 140 over 85, I don't even think that's high. That's borderline high. And I always reference this because I, I listen to like a two and a half hour podcast. Once again, on that Peter T of the drive, and he had just an expert that's his whole life was like blood pressure and uh, he was an MD as well. And he felt that I heard him say it more than once. Peter Atiyah did not agree with him though. So I just want to bring that up. He said that he wouldn't medicate anyone if their blood pressure, unless their blood pressure was over 140, over 90 consistently. And that's almost my, that's my feeling too. But, uh, but hey, I'm not a doctor, you know? So check me doctor. But Gene, you, you're so, you lose a little bit more weight. Your blood pressure is going down for sure. Hey, Jen, hey, Jen, Jen, thanks for showing up. Good morning, Mike. What are your thoughts on breaking a fast with a protein? I love it. I think it's the best thing you can do. Could just think, if, especially if you're breaking your fast with like your first meal, obviously that's breaking your fast. You've probably been in a fasted state for a while. You know, you're not in mTOR. You were, you were in the autophagy. You were repairing a AMPK. It's important to take in protein for your first meal. I listened to another podcast with another expert. Same thing saying too. He was an MD as well and a PhD. He had, he had like, a, like a dual degree. He was saying taking a minimum of 30 grams of protein for your first meal when you break a fast. He would rather you more 50, 60 grams. That's what I do. I try to go, I try to go even higher if I can, you know, when I break my fast. Hey, 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 Mike, do you mind if I ask your age? I'm 60. Thanks. Yeah, and I'd say it was a rough year turn. I didn't like turning 60. I'm glad I made it, but you know, turn turning 60 is a tough one. This is my hardest birthday. Okay, so and also, like I said, I mentioned the other, other study how it can also studies have shown to help reduce your cancer risk, being in a fasted state, and like I said, reduce inflammation, like uh, Gene mentioned earlier. You know for sure. Now, it, you know, if also let me know too. So I know Jeff would prefer maybe me making the slides bigger. Also, if you do like some of the studies and you really want to pull up studies every Sunday, I really can do that. I read them all the time. I'm I'm on top of them, so just let me know. I try to keep these slides a little bit a little bit bigger. You know, so let me move the camera over too. So maybe that'll help a little bit. 
I can even slide the camera this way a little bit more. And I'll try to keep the slides, make the slides a little bit bigger. I just want you to feel like I'm looking at you. No, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, let's see. Hey, let's see what Chris got. Chris, I just tested my blood pressure just now and it was 128 over 81. There you go, Chris. That's ideal. I think that's great. Your gym advice has really helped me. I've, I, I've been going for two weeks now. Fantastic. That's also going to help with the blood pressure too. Working out helps with blood pressure. I love, that's great. I mean, you're, you're already, I think, in no, a normal range, 128 over 81. That four pounds made a difference for sure. Okay, why don't I pop that up? That's kind of strange. All right, so let's go. Let's talk about week one. And this is good for John Manus. This is good for you if you want to start off easy, if you don't want to jump right into 16 8. So, week one, right, you're going to do a 12 to 14 hour fast. And I'm going to say TRE, meaning time restricted eating, because you can be doing it every day. And I, when I like to start people off really easy. Don't even think about changing your diet. You're going to change your diet in, in a few weeks. But just to get you used to eating a smaller eating window, keep to your normal diet, keep to your normal foods, but just try to really fast for 12 to 14 hours. And there's even this, I, I think it was called, is it one? I used to have this, I, I, I should have looked it up before this presentation. There's an app you can put on your phone where as soon as you have your last meal, like you hit a button and it just counts down. And just try not to eat, I mean, even 12 hours is good. Try to go 14 if you can. And there was, this is the study I'm talking about. There was a, a study that I loved, talked about people, and this is all they did. All they did was delay breakfast for 90 minutes, and then they ate dinner 90 minutes earlier. And I think 68% of those people dramatically ate less food. And they wound up losing weight, improvement in blood work, all things like that. So that's how I like people to start. Just literally eat breakfast 90 minutes later, eat dinner 90 minutes earlier. You'll probably be fasting somewhere around 14 hours. I think you're gonna do incredibly great. Don't worry about changing your diet. Just get used to a little bit of a smaller eating window. Maybe the first day or two you're gonna, it's more habit. Like the first, the habit of you like waking up and maybe instantly making breakfast or throwing a piece of, piece of toast or something like that. If you can just wait 90 minutes, and then, you know, don't eat 8, 9 o'clock at night. Just eat dinner a little bit earlier, 90 minutes earlier. You're going to be thinner at the end of the week. 90% of the people, in my opinion, try it. It's the easiest way to get started. But then I'd like you to do, just to get yourself used to it, why don't you try on Sunday that first week, do a 16-8. So maybe instead of doing 14 hours, this will be your first day where you jump into a 16 hour fast. And I find Sunday, Sunday to be the easiest day. It's the most low key day. Obviously, I'm assuming you're not working on a Sunday, right? You can get up. I don't know if you like to read the paper. I'm still old school. I, I still, we, we read the New York Times a little bit too. But if I'm not doing, you know, I'll read them even after this, um, when I get back from my walk after this, the last time I do, it's easy to fast on a day when it's just like a cool, relaxed day. Drink an extra cup of coffee. Try to go 16 hours and then give yourself an eight hour eating the window and you still don't have to change your diet this first week. Okay, have you ever followed any information on, yeah, Volta Longa, sure, sure. I, I've read um, The Longevity Diet, which I thought was a great book. And you know, he does a lot of great research. He even does a lot of great research with cancer and, and pretty fat, you know, giving people fasting protocols. And, and, and Gene is familiar with um, Volta Longa too. We've talked about it in the past. The only thing with Volta Longo is, you know, obviously he's a PhD. I'm sure he's a lot smarter than I am. I would differ from him because he's very, um, he's a little bit more plant-based than me and he's much more low protein than me because he's, he's concerned about mTOR. He's concerned about constantly spiking protein because some people feel though if you're constantly spi spiking protein and, go, and constantly going in a growth phase, you know, bad things can grow too, such as cancer and things like that. So for example, he has this thing called the ProLine, which is, which is called the fasting mimicking diet, where maybe, depending upon your, your health and what's going on with you, he likes people to maybe once a quarter, maybe even, you know, it could be more frequently or less frequently, do this um, extremely low protein plant-based diet that's very low in calories like maybe 700 calories, something like that a day. I think Gene's really familiar with it too, maybe even more than me. And um, is, he feels that you can get the same benefit of doing like a five-day fast, doing the fasting mimicking diet, but you're allowed to take in some calories. I think it's a good thing. I always wanted to do it. A number of my clients have done it. They seem to like it. I even have one client who did it. He did really well, lost about six, seven pounds. 
he felt like he just reset him. He, like, he wound up losing a lot of his sugar cravings. And then he orders the um, food. It comes in like prepackaged food, like bars and teas and soups and things like that. Like he may do it once a week. He'll do like that pro-line f- food plan. He likes it. It's like, in my opinion, it's almost just like a low calorie day. It's like an OMAD day, you know? And I'm more into protein. I think all the research, I think is conclusive to maintain muscle mass when you get older. You know, if you want to increase your muscle mass, you need protein. I'm a big protein guy. I'm a protein guy, fiber guy, you know, like that for sure. You'll see more when we go through when we come to changing the diet a little bit. A fantastic app. I use it. Oh, that's great. Cool. Let's see. Thanks for the great breakdown. Oh, I know. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks for showing up. Okay, let's let's go to week two. So week two is going to be once again just a, maybe a little bit more challenging, but still really manageable. So now that you've been fasting for twelve to fourteen hours a day, right? Sunday, the end of the week, you did a sixteen eight. We're going to keep you with this, you know, with the sixteen eight week two, and still no change in diet. That's key for most people, I think, to ease in because I've even made the mistake with people before where I've, I've, I've asked too much of them too quickly. Like I say, okay, do 16-8, you know, stop eating all your junk food. And then people are just like, this fasting thing is not for me. They don't feel good and whatever. But I think if you ease your way into it and still able to eat some of your favorite foods, you're going to be eating less. Let's, let's see what, what John's got. Hey, Mike, if I'm going to bed at 10 at night, skipping breakfast and going right to lunch at 1 p.m. daily, is that the right amount of fasting? For a beginner. Okay, so for example, you're going to bed at 10, you skip breakfast, and and going, and okay, and then you fast till 1 o'clock, so you're breaking your fast at 1. Is that the right amount of fasting for me? Okay, so you're saying, but then I'm assuming, John, that you're having, um, you're having dinner like three hours before you before you go to sleep. Just let me know that. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean. So you're, you're going to sleep relatively early, 9 o'clock, you wake up, you're skipping breakfast. You're breaking your fast at 1 p.m. I'm, not, I, I, I'm assuming you're not doing OMAD. You're not just doing one meal. You're having a second meal or so, or maybe you're having a little bit of food up until like 7 o'clock, and you're doing like a 16-8, something like that. If you're doing that, I think that's great. If you're doing OMAD, and you're really aggressive, and you're literally only eating one meal at 1 o'clock, I would make it really high in protein and get as much like nutrition and fiber as you possibly can if you're doing OMAD. But I wouldn't want you to do that for too long. I'd rather you do, do something like that intermittently, maybe three days a week if you want to do it indefinitely, or maybe just do it for like a month, lose a ton of weight, and then go to maintenance, you know? Okay, yes. Uh, yes, so you are having dinner. Then I think that's great. I think that's a great thing to do, John. I think it's perfect. You're doing like a classic, maybe, you know, a 16-8, 18-6. Just make sure, like, make sure, well, we're going to talk about this more, is that you're prioritizing protein. So make sure you're taking in, like, take your body weight, multiply it by 0.7. I probably want you just, because I kind of know, I haven't seen you in a long time, but we're kind of probably the same height and weight and everything. I'd probably want you eating 140, 150 grams of protein a day. Every four ounces of chicken, fish, and meat, 25 grams. So taking 50, you know, 50, 60 grams. I'm eating dinner. Yeah, taking, like, 50, 60 grams of protein at 1 p.m. Maybe you want to have, like, a protein bar or protein shake around 3, 4, I like those no-cal Quest bar. And then for dinner, make sure you're taking another 50 grams or so of protein. Have a nice eight-ounce piece of like salmon or fish or something like that. Two different colored vegetables. Eat an avocado with lunch. I mean, you're going to see my whole eating style. And I know you've watched some of these live streams before. You want protein high. You want fiber high for sure. And you'll be keeping calories under control by eliminating those empty calories for sure. Okay, so week two, 16-8, time-restricted eating. Great way to dip into stored energy. Excellent way to reduce your calories. You're going to be eating so much less. You're going to be increasing insulin sensitivity. Now, this is where it gets debatable. This is what we're discussing now with John. You can skip breakfast or you can skip dinner. If you've been showing up to these live streams and you've been following my, my, all my YouTube videos, you know that all the, I've been talking about how the new research is really indicating that early time restricted eating. I feel like I'm not looking at the camera when I have it like that. That early time restricted eating is probably better, even for you, John, but I just want you to get started, John, doing what fits into your lifestyle. And I did that for a decade, exactly what you're doing, John, where I skipped breakfast, me and my wife, I broke my fast 12, 1 o'clock, had dinner like 7 o'clock, whatever. I did that for a decade, worked incredibly well. But the new research is indicating that taking in calories, particularly protein, earlier within the day is probably better 
for maintaining muscle mass and, and things like that, and for your circadian rhythm. Like I said, eating jump starts your circadian rhythm in the morning. So if you can, do this 16-8, where you say eating at 10 o'clock and you're done at 4 or 5 o'clock, that's probably better. But it doesn't make all that much difference. I, in the beginning, it, just think you're new to intermittent fasting, you're just getting started. Let's just get your, your system, your brain, your body, your life used to these shorter eating windows. So I think you can skip breakfast or skip dinner. But the key though is no food three hours before bedtime. So John, in your case, seven, what's that, seven, eight, nine, ten. By seven o'clock, you should be done. I mean, you can still drink liquids at night, Pellegrino. You can still drink some plain tea. You want to have some chamomile tea, something like that. That's also, if you like to drink wine or something, drink it early. Have it like, you know, with dinner. But at seven o'clock, you're done. No food, seven, eight, nine, ten, three hours if you can. Try that. That makes a big difference. You're going to sleep better. You're going to digest everything better. It's important. It's not good. There's so many studies. I did a whole live stream on it on all the negatives of eating late at night. And, and you really want to go to sleep on an empty stomach, no doubt about it. Okay, so let's jump now into week week number three. This is when we're starting to like um, get into more of my, like, my favorite types and, and, and my different types of, um, of fasting strategies. This is kind of like my favorite. This is my, uh, yeah, let me get this. I'll, I'll go back with that so we can keep this slide kind of big. Okay, this, this is my 16-8. Two mad plus a protein shake, and I feel like I'm get, kind of getting known for this because I post so much. Um, I post so much content about this. On I do this, like if you follow me on TikTok, if you follow me on Instagram, and I've, I've even been putting a lot of YouTube shorts where I post my meals and I talk about eating two meals a day plus a protein shake. That's my go-to long-term strategy. Whether you want to maintain your weight, whether you want to lose your weight, because then you're just gonna like you know manipulate calories or whether you want to even put on muscle, I think you can really do that with two mad plus a protein shake. And the fact that you're fasting for 16 hours, you're getting all those incredibly, all those incredible benefits of being in a fasted state. So let's break this whole down, break this whole thing down. But the thing is still week three, I still don't have you changing your diet because I want you to get used to these, this, these protocols, these schedules, these strategies first. Okay, so you're gonna fast for 16 hours taking all your calories within an eight hour eating window. But now, instead of eating throughout that entire eight hour eating window, I really want you to do it with only two meals. That's why they call it two mat, two meals a day. But most people won't take in enough protein with only two meals. So I want, to, I want you to make sure you're taking enough protein by either, either adding a protein shake or a protein bar. Okay, so but let's, let's break it down further. So this is my favorite intermittent fasting. And also this is a strategy you can do intermittently. You can do it three, four days a week, or you can do it every day. For this four-week program, I like you to do it every day, and we call that time-restricted eating. It's a little bit more advanced than 16 8 because you're going to be eating less. When you just say two meals plus a protein shake, protein bar, you're, you're going to be reducing calories even more than just eating throughout that whole eight-hour eating window. Okay, so eat two meals, protein shake, a bar, eight-hour eating window. What I, okay. Also important, just space, it's also important to space out your meals. Like don't just eat like two meals back to back, eight hour eating window. You know, you wanna basically like do what I said, if you're gonna be eating breakfast, you know, then you're gonna like say you have breakfast at 10 o'clock, you have a protein bar maybe at like one, two, you eat your dinner at 5.30, you do something like that. If you're skipping breakfast, maybe you wanna bring a protein bar to work, right? You have your protein bar at, at 12 o'clock for lunch, Maybe you have, you know, you run out of the office to do whatever you're doing. You have your like late lunch at two. You have your dinner, um, you know, before seven o'clock, seven, seven thirty, something like that. Just space it out. And the main reason for that is that you want to get protein spaced out about three hours between meals. And it seems like most of the research is leading towards if you go much beyond 60 grams of protein, unless you're really a big guy or gal. You're probably not going to utilize that protein for hyper, you know, muscle hypertrophy, but you will still use it for the rest of your body. And I've even done a, I did a whole live, live stream on this too, talking about how there's been some research doing that people on the OMAD diet who take in like 100 grams of protein seem to do pretty well comparing to people who took in like 100 grams over three meals. So it's somewhat debatable, but, f but for my research, I think 60 grams of protein is somewhat of the upper limit. And that's kind of what I do. Like I'll typically have you know, two meals, 60 grams of protein in each meal, and then I'll have a protein shake or a protein bar with like 25, 30 grams. I try to get, I try to get about 150 grams of protein every day. Okay, so someone's from Facebook. 
I did that this week. Two meals protein shake or bar, lost 2.8 pounds. Ooh, I love that. I love that. that that's a good comment. So we got some um, support for my program, which is really great. Love it. Again, okay, once again, the main thing is, however you structure it, I just want you to get started. And I don't want to give you too much, but just the main thing, a couple of rules I keep on saying, just don't need three hours before bed. I was only going to say two hours, but three hours before bed, no food. And just think, remember now we got a little bit more aggressive. Now after week three, you're used to eating two meals a day plus a protein shake, protein bar. And once, oh yeah, my favorite protein shakes, I, I always say Garden of Life, love their whey protein. Also Garden of Life, I love their plant protein. You can go to my my Amazon, I have an Amazon account, like it's called, I'm an Amazon influencer, and I have all these supplements, all the things I take, and some of my favorite products, even from coffee machines to vacuums. You know, I make a little bit of money from that. I, could, I get like a very small commission, like a affiliate link commission. You can look me up Amazon, just say Google Amazon My Cola and it'll take you right to my page and you'll see the protein powders that I like. The protein bars that I like, I like no cow, plant-based, love it, high in fiber, high in protein. And I also like Quest. I know, I know Gene's really into those Quest protein bars too. My wife eats a Quest bar every day. I eat a no cow bar if I didn't do a shake just about every day. That's probably what, what I'll have when I get back from my walk right before my, you know, to break my OMAD day. Cause let's go week for four. Okay, this is where it's, it does get a, a little tough. Let's see what, what Chris got. Thanks thanks to you, I'm doing a 10 to 15 minute walk after dinner. That sounds great. See, that's another interesting thing Chris is doing, which I love. There's a, there's, there was a, I did a video on this too. There's a study, I think there's even more than one study. There's even one study with two minutes that shows that taking a 10 minute walk post meal. Let's say you're a typical person eats three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner and you took a 10 minute walk right after you ate, it controls blood sugar just as well as taking like metformin, which is a diabetes type medication, which is really incredible. That's why I, I've talked about this in the past too. People in, in, you know, out of the US, like in Europe and Italy and France, even though they, they probably, I, I like the Mediterranean diet too a lot, but even though they do drink wine and they smoke and they do eat, you know, some bread and cheeses and things like that, they're, they are so much more active than people in the US. They eat, they walk, they eat, they walk. They go to lunch, they walk home. They eat dinner, dinner, they walk home. You know, it, they're just outside walking so much more. So it's so key to improving your health, walking consistently. I walk every day, 60 to 90 minutes. Today's my long walk. I'll probably walk about 100, 120 minutes. Do two laps at the Hudson, you know, along the Hudson River, which I absolutely love. Hey, Gwen, Gwen's here. Thanks for showing up, Gwen. I gained weight this week, but I was on my period, and that's always, you know, it happens. So it's not, that's not normal weight. So don't worry about that. You, you know, you get bloated, you get a little inflammation. That should hopefully get right to it. I think it'll come off. If you want to follow this exact plan, Gwen, do it. I mean, you may be, in your case, since you're a little familiar with it, I would probably skip week one, go right to week two. I mean, you can even go to week four, too, because I know you've been following this for a while. Let's see what Steve's got. Hey, Steve. Mike, do you get a benefit if I click a product from your Amazon page and purchase? Just want to make sure I'm doing it. Yes, I do, Steve. <laughs> you know, like 1%, 2%. But, I, you know, I don't know if you know, but I have, uh, <clears throat> I must have 300. They call them, let me take a little coffee here. I have over 300, they call them shoppable videos. What shoppable videos mean, I don't know if, you, if, if you've noticed them. Some people get confused because they think it's normal people who purchase the product. And everything I've reviewed on Amazon, I personally used, I purchased it, you know, my, my wife and kids live on Amazon. If you look at the bottom of a product on Amazon, let's say you're looking at a coffee machine. Like I, I, I've done, I have a whole bunch of all these different espresso, coffee machines that I have in my house. <clears throat> so after you, if, if you scroll down to the bottom of, um, of the picture and the description of the product, you're gonna see some videos before you see individual reviews. See those videos, like I made 300 of them so far. So if you watch like 30 seconds of my video and then click and buy the product, I make like one, two, sometimes 3%. And I'm doing pretty good with it actually. I, feel, I find that, I don't know how rewarding I find it, but I don't know, I, I'm not sure how deep I should go into it too because Amazon can say one day, you know, we're not doing it anymore. And sometimes I also go live where I'll do a live show, like a QVC, a home shopping network show on Amazon. I mean, I mean go Amazon, my call or follow me. I'm just gonna, give me one second. <coughs> and you'll see what I'm talking about. I do my own live QVC show. I generally talk about supplements and things like that. I think it's kind of fun to do, who knows. 
But yes, Steve, I will make a small commission. So wait, I'd love you to buy everything you buy on Amazon, buy through my link, it'll be great for me. Okay, this is Gwen. What if you eat oatmeal, but put the protein shake? No, I, I do that all the time, Gwen, I love it. I think it's great. I, I like the, um, I take half a cup of oatmeal from time to time, because I'm a relatively low carb guy, but I, I like eating oatmeal from time to time. I'll do half a cup of, o of oats, and then I'll, but this is why I do it. I don't cook it with the, with the protein powder in it, because I find like it just, the heat messes it up. First, I cook the oatmeal. And then you have to put more water because the the protein powder would absorb the water. And then I'll put a scoop of that whey protein isolate in it. It's great because I like vanilla chocolate. It really flavors the oatmeal really well. I mix it up. Sometimes I'll throw in like a tablespoon of a ground flaxseed. And then you know what? I got to do a, a loud cough because I, I I'm just drying in here. I got the heat going on, but I'm, I want to shut the mic off because I don't want people to um I don't want it to blow your ears out. Okay, I think that's better. And then I'll put like, and then I'll put a, like a, maybe a teaspoon of ground flaxseed, and then I maybe I put some blueberries. I do that all the time. I love that. I think that's a great, um, a great like post workout meal. You know, when I want to give myself a little bit of carbs, I'll do something like that. I think it's great to do one. Okay, so yeah, let's let, so let's go week four. This is where things get kind of a little bit more challenging because week four, I feel if you got the momentum, you're used to doing the two mad and the protein shake, protein bar, but maybe you've still been eating. You know, a lot of a lot of like junky food, some of your trigger foods, and you really haven't cleaned up the quality of your diet. But week four, this is when I would like you to clean up the diet. And this is a strategy, I think you can do this for the rest of your life indefinitely. Go in and out of a calorie deficit depending upon what your goals are. I think this is a long-term strategy. And after trying so many different schedules, this is my favorite, and this is what I'm personally gonna stick to until I, you know, I, will, I always change my mind until I find something better. Okay, so first, so now week four, this is when I want you to get rid of the junk food as best as you can. Get rid of those trigger foods. I talk about this all the time. There's certain foods in your life that you know you should have in your house. For me, I, I can't have potato chips. It's interesting, Super Bowl Sunday, I'm gonna be eating some potato chips today. And I know my nephew loves potato chips. He's coming over, you know, so, you know, I'm gonna eat potato chips. And I only bought one bag because I know I don't want any leftover. I I'll eat them if they're in the house. Get those trigger foods out of the house. You know what your trigger foods are. Don't keep them in your house, right? Try to eat as clean as possible. And when I mean clean, I don't mean low fat. I mean just no processed garbage, cookies, cakes, you know, empty calorie type foods. Do the best you can with that. Now, if you wanna tighten up the diet and just make sure that you're losing weight and body fat as quickly as possible, you might wanna start tracking calories. It's optional. But you know, when people start fasting and start just working with me and just, it just things are just not going right. I say, okay, you know, we tried doing it without counting calories, without tracking things, but if things aren't going as quickly as you like, or you just, you know, why things aren't working, then I wanna start, I want people to start tracking stuff. I always like, I always recommend my fitness pal. It's a free app, put it on your phone. You can use it so, so easily. Let's see, I think Gwen had another question. Is it, Let's see again. Problem for me is everything is a trick food. I know for some people it is. So Gwen, in your case, I probably really would want you to start tracking everything, Gwen. I know it takes time. Use my fitness pal. Just make sure then you're in a calorie deficit. That's still the most important thing. Calorie deficit when it comes to losing weight. And I mentioned that even the last week. There's, there's, there are studies, they call them pair studies where they put people on the same amount of calories, but they use different, um, like food quality, different macros. Like, like let's say someone's eating 2,000 calories and that's a deficit for them and they're eating like junky food where someone else is doing, or maybe they say their twin is doing the same 2,000 calories but they're eating high protein, fruit, vegetables, eating a good healthy diet. They both may lose the same amount of weight but the people who eat healthier have a better like body fat percentage and things like that. They'll have more muscle mass. They'll just be healthier and their numbers will be better. You know, but calories really is, it's all about calories. You know for sure. So in your case, Gwen, I would start tracking everything. And my calorie deficit formula is 10, 11 times your body weight. So I wanted to give an example. You'll see on the next slide, I break it down exactly with, with someone who's 200 pounds who wants to weigh 175. Then I, my key, since I'm a protein guy, I want you to eat an adequate amount of protein. I like 0 0.7 times your body weight. That's a reasonable amount of protein. You know, it, it, these numbers get messed up if you have to lose a tremendous amount of weight. Say if you're 300 pounds and you wanna weigh 175, you can use your goal weight. 
when it comes to calculating these numbers. And you can sometimes even like like varying it. One day using your normal body weight to eat more, one day using your goal weight. I mean, there's so many different ways to um to manipulate that. Let's see what Gwen's got. That's funny. Because, that's this is Gwen. That's funny because I've had I have a twin and she's way skinnier than me. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm curious to know what she's doing. Like what what are you doing different? You know, between the two. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. So you know, that's how you calculate your protein. You want to eat a good amount of protein. Plus, protein is the most satisfying food. Eat protein. You're not hungry for hours. There's a high thermic effect of protein, meaning that for every 100 calories of protein you eat, you're gonna burn up 20, 30 percent of those calories just digesting and processing the protein. I'm a big protein guy. It's the building blocks of your body. When you get older, you need pro you need protein is is key for sure. And then this is what I've been talking about lately in the last few months. Instead of me telling people, okay, make sure you eat six servings of fruits and vegetables every day. I'd rather just tell someone, make sure you're eating 35 grams of fiber or more. That guarantees me that you're eating healthy because how, do, how else are you gonna get the fiber? You have to eat vegetables, you have to eat some fruits. You can even do those high fiber type grains like an oatmeal, but, but the key is to keep your calories in line taking an adequate amount of protein and then make sure you're taking in your fiber. For example, if I didn't say if I didn't say 35 grams of fiber, that means you could be eating cookies, cakes and donuts as long as you're keeping your calories in line, you know, you're okay with the calories but you're not eating healthy. But for you to but for you to get 35 grams of, of fiber and you have to eat healthy. You got to eat the vegetables, the fruits and the super high fiber grains, grains and you can't overdo that or else you're gonna go over your calories. So I would look at those three things, or I say four things, is, is how you control your weight, how you lose weight, how to eat well. First of all, you gotta keep calories in line, right? If you wanna maintain your weight, you stay maintenance, 15 times your body weight. You wanna be in a deficit 10, 11 times, right? You wanna take an adequate amount of protein, right? To maintain muscle mass for, you know, it's a building block to your body. You wanna eat a good amount of fiber for your digestive tract, for you think of bacteria in your stomach, you know, pre, probiotics, you know, all that type of stuff. It ensures me that you're eating vegetables, some fruits, maybe some, you know, some low sugar, high fiber type grains. And the fourth thing I, I love this um, food timing. You know, giving yourself small eating windows so you get the benefits, all those health benefits like we talked about in the earlier slides about being in a fasted state. This is, I mean, this is just ideal eating. You know, in, in my opinion. So let's 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 break down an exact example. I'll show you exactly what I mean, like with the numbers. Let me turn this so I can make this like really big. I just feel like when I turn the camera, I hope you, uh, you know, people think like, where are my eyes looking at? I want my eyes to look at that thing. So yeah, people on this end. So here's a good example. I'm going to make this really big because I really broke it down. So here's an example of someone, of someone who's 200 pounds, right? Their goal weight is to weigh 170. So let's break down. First, we'll break down the calories. So 200, right? You take your weight, times it by 10, multiply it by 10. That's 2,000 calories a day. You can go as high as 22, I think you'll still do well at 22. Or you can cycle, right? One day, 2,000, next, next day, go 22. So it gives you a little bit more um, leeway. When it comes to the protein, you know, I just talked about my favorite types of protein, fish, poultry, red meat, eggs, dairy, you know, those protein shakes, protein bars. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, a little more challenging, you know, you may have to take in a little more calories to get enough protein. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, though, I strongly recommend you really go heavy in, in the protein shakes and, and like that no cow protein bar is a vegan bar, 21 grams of protein, 210 calories. Also, um, I would get hemp seed, pea protein. You want complete protein as a vegetarian. And I know vegetarians don't feel they need enough protein, but I think the research is really saying you, you do. And you know maybe people would have to debate me on that, but that's my feeling on it. So for example, you take 200 pounds, you multiply that by 0 0.7, that's 140 grams of protein. That's if you're 200 pounds, you want to weigh 170, right? You could use 170 um, if you want to and maybe eat a little bit less protein, but I think 140 grams protein for a 200 pound person is great, you know? Then um, the third thing you want to do, like I said, you want to eat that fiber, 35 grams of fiber or more, so you're going to be forced to eat vegetables, some fruits, like an avocado is my go-to. I just like to, I eat an avocado every day, 17, 18 grams of fiber, Eight nine hundred milligrams of potassium. Net carbs very low because the fiber is so high. It's a superfood. I would eat an avocado every day unless you hate the taste of it. I know some people do. I post avocados in my videos all the time. And some it's shocking to me how many people say to me, "Oh, I hate av. I love an avocado. I mean guacamole. I'm gonna I'm gonna be eating a whole bunch of guacamole today for Super Bowl Sunday for sure. Okay, and and this is like the eating schedule. Okay, like I gave you a typical example of like how you would do week four doing the 
16, eight, right? Two mad plus a protein shake or protein bar. You wake up in the morning, you do my like my morning routine. First, you know, obviously you do, we go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, whatever you're doing. You, um, I love Pellegrino mineral water. I drink like a whole one of those liter bottles. I squeeze fresh lemon into it. I do one, sometimes I even do two lemons, maybe a teeny bit of calories, maybe five calories you're getting there, 10 the most. But you know, like I said, lemon juice has been known to lower blood sugar. In my opinion, you're not breaking the fast. You do. I get more of a buzz or more of a jolt, like a wake up feeling from that lemon water, more than the coffee, more than the caffeine in the coffee. Because you're waking up, you're dehydrated, I think it's a great thing to do. Like I said, lately I've been, mostly I've been drinking espresso. I love espresso. Just got back from Italy, like I said. But sometimes I'll do this regular coffee. So then you have your first meal, say, at 12 o'clock. So we're not doing early time-restricted eating. This is the easier way. This is how I think most people will get started with this time-restricted eating. You skip breakfast, just have your black coffee, your lemon water. You can even put apple cider vinegar in your in your mineral water, too, if you like that. One, 12 o'clock, you have your lunch, right, whatever it is. Sticking with this healthy plan, you have like a, I love. I, I'm going to give you some examples in the next Q and A, the next slide about all the meals I've been eating this week. Like for example, the nice big arugula spinach salad, eight ounces of salmon on top, maybe some blueberries, like things like that. A nice good healthy lunch, protein bar at 3:30 just to make sure you're taking enough protein. Second meal by 7 p.m. No food three hours before bed. Now, John, if you're still here and you want to be aggressive and you want to just like say, like, Mike, I'm doing this. You can just jump right into this if you're really motivated. I can help you any way I can. You can text me. I know you have my number or whatever. Uh, I've known John for like many years. I just haven't seen him. We used to work together, you know, when we were kids. He's a wonderful guy. Same with Steve. I think Steve knows John as well, too. Um, so, you know, this is it. I, I, this is just a great plan. I mean, you cannot, you cannot go wrong with it. Let's see what Jeff's got. Yeah. Okay. Now the text is a size I can read in full screen. Okay, good. So you like that? I'm gonna do. I'll do this then, maybe, maybe because I don't really like when you see people's little head in a circle. And then I got a big thing. I'll maybe I'll start do, setting it up, setting it up more like this, and I'll keep the camera sideways. As long as you feel like my eyes are looking at you guys, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, my eyes are going in a different direction. Let's see what Chris got to say. Okay, thank you so much, Mike, for doing this every Sunday. You are really helping people live their healthiest body. Peace be with you. My friend, no, I, cre- I appreciate it, Chris. It's so nice of you to say that. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's go into now. Okay, let me give you now some examples of um. That's another camera angle too I can use. I just feel like the that's my side angle. When I when I do my um like back to what Steve said. When I do my Amazon live streams, I'll have all my supplements like over here. So sometimes I use that camera angle, you know, like a real lot. But I'm always like I'm always turning my head having a look at the camera, you know, when I do my Amazon live. And then you can see my man Frank Zane. Best bodybuilder of all times, you know, I, I, he's great. I love, I love looking at that picture. I got a sign. He signed it for me too, you know, which is great. Okay, so let's let's get go over some exact meal examples of what I've been. And this is just literally what I've been eating this week. This is actually a dinner, and th- I know it seems it, it, this is not not the prettiest picture, but it's such a good example of I think ideal eating. See, I always like, and this is for dinner. I I use the same formula over and over again, and I really recommend two different colored vegetables or vegetable fruit, different colors. So it may seem simple, but this is stewed tomatoes. And it's this This is big. I think me and my wife both split this. It's hard to size up the size of plates. These are tremendous bowls. And that's like a serving bowl for probably four people. There must be a dozen tomatoes in there. So stewed tomatoes, which I love. I like to de-seed them. Good for your prostate too for men. You know, the, um, I hope you get the, what's that? Lapacan, I figured how to pronounce that. The enzyme that's really good for reducing inflammation in the prostate. And then um, onions, I love it. Actually, you know, EVO, oh, maybe a little garlic powder, I really love it. Tremendous big piece of salmon. I'd probably eat, that's probably a pound and a half of salmon on that big plate. I'll probably eat almost a pound myself, get like 80, 100 grams of protein. Obviously, if you're a gal or, or my Gwen or something, you don't want to go, go as big as that, but that's just a perfect, perfect meal. And I don't want to exaggerate too. See, I'm more, I'm probably in like a maintenance mode now for calories. Maybe after this, I may have some shelled nuts another couple of hundred calories. I may have like a row of like um, 85% dark chocolate. I mean, I, I don't wanna show that as much, but I may have a little something like that. If I have a glass of wine, now I try to drink my wine earlier in the evening. I'll try to have it maybe right before, like I have a glass of red wine. I drink, I'm into French and Italian red wine. I think it's the, the healthiest compared to these California wines. Um, you know, maybe a six ounce glass of like a Multipucciani, Multipucciano or like Costa Rona, like just table wine, inexpensive wine. I like drinking a glass of wine from time to time. 
And I think Steve knows that, that I like drinking wine. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, uh, ooh, ooh, that looks really good, that salad. Yeah, oh, this is a good salad. I think I did a video on this salad. This is, this is like a lunch thing. This is what I mean, like perfect, perfect eating. You can't eat any better than this. I got my arugula salad. That may be a combination of arugula and spinach. I don't know if you can see the spinach. I got my can of sardines in there, 21 grams of protein. To me, sardines, super food. I eat them like consistently, high in omega-3 fatty acids. Those omega-3 fatty acids are the, are the fats that your body you know, can't make on their own. You have to get them through your diet. Like Gene was concerned with, not just concerned, he was mentioning inflammation, you know, omega-3. Omega-3 is good for reducing inflammation, great for your brain health. Plus, when you eat sardines, you get the skin, you get the connective tissue, right, the collagen, you get the bones, like the calcium. I love sardines, but and see, this is what I mean by taking in enough protein. That can of sardines, I think it's 21 or 21 grams. I want more. So I also um, boil two pasture-raised um, uh, eggs. It gives me like another 15 grams of protein. And that's even a little life in me. So that's like 21 from the sardines plus 15, that's 36. I probably didn't show this, but typically when I'm only taking a 36 grams of protein, I want more. For dessert, I'll have like a Greek yogurt, 100 calories, another 15 grams of protein. That'll pop me up to my normal range. 50, 60 grams. And even in that Greek yogurt, I may throw in some, some you know, raspberries, or if I did blueberries, I'll throw something else, maybe a scoop of also that ground um, flaxseed. I also have an avocado, which I eat every single day, high in potassium, high in fiber. Then I have my blueberries. And they're, they were low sugar, low sugar fruit, the blueberries. I just throw them in there because it makes the salad taste so good. It makes the salad so much fun to eat. And like, th there's a question I got this week, which is a good question. I think it was someone from Facebook. They want to know, well, what type of dressing did you put on the salad? See, when I buy my sardines, they're packed in the can in extra virgin olive oil. So I want to add olive oil. There's so much olive oil in the sardines that I use that, then I'll just put some balsamic vinegar. And this is what I mean by perfect eating. And that's a big plate. You can adjust the portion size if, you, if you're doing your calories, if you want to just you know cut back on calories. He's, ooh, this looks really good too. This was, um, I figured if this was a dinner or a lunch. I think I made a video, a short video on this that did really well. These are four chicken breasts, um, I mean, I'm sorry, four chicken thighs, skinless, probably 60, 70 grams of protein there. There's a decent amount, probably 10 ounces of chicken or more. Like I said, every four ounces, about 25 grams. Once again, my avocado with the blueberries. Blueberries and avocado go so well together. And I do try to eat fermented foods almost every single day. If I'm not eating a Greek yogurt, if I'm not eating like sauerkraut, I'm having pickles, or something like that. I know, I know I know Chris is into the fermented foods too. Feeds the good bacteria in your stomach, good for gut health, things like that. And you know, I don't buy the vinegar pickles. That this is um, Bubba's. I buy the Bubba's um, pickles. It's, you know, it's made the old fashioned way. So they're truly like fermented. And I also buy the Bubba's um, sauerkraut, which I love too. This was a great meal. I mean, when we made chicken, you know, we really, I, I, I like to over season things. I remember one time I was at Steve's house in, in California. This was years ago. I remember I was, I think I over-seasoned the steak or something, but I think it may, it may have come out okay. Let's see what Gwen's got. Oh, yeah, I love, you know, I love pickles too. Yeah, definitely. But I don't like those vinegar pickles, you know, like maybe you would get like a Nathan's or something. You got to get the old-fashioned type so you get all the good benefits, all the good bacteria type stuff in the, in the um, you know, it, it feeds the good bacteria in your stomach, like truly fermented foods. Let's see what else. I think I got some, a couple other examples. Of mine. Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, it's interesting. You know, for some reason, my, the, the, that Italian deli that I talk about all the time, grocery, the shrimp has been on sale. They had these like wild caught shrimp from the Gulf, and they've been on sale. It's like nine ninety nine a pound. They're normally double. So I've been like eating a lot of shrimp lately. I think another incredibly perfect meal. But if you notice, there was actually two types of protein here because I want to get sixty grams or more. I did a video on this too. So once again, I have my arugula salad. I have probably half a pound of shrimp, you know, only five bucks, which is great. Um, and I wanted like, like over 50 grams, so I also had leftover black and salmon from the night before. May have been from the plate from that first picture that I showed you, because I want to get, you know, 10 ounces or so of uh, fish to get to my 60 grams of protein. How do you know if it's old fashioned? It'll say it uh, right on the label. It won't say old fashioned, it'll, it'll say, um, naturally like fermented. I'll say something like that. You know, I'll, I did a video on that. I can't think of it, the exact word. There's a phrase that they use, but I think it is naturally fermented. You know, where it takes time and they're not just, they're not just like vinegar pickles where they just give you the, you know, the flavor of it being fermented. That's why Bubby's, all the Bubby's stuff is. And I've even had pictures of it. 
and I might be able to pull it up. I may have a picture of it. And I think it just tastes right. They're a little expensive though. You may, like for that big jar, I bet you get a lot of pickles in there. I mean, it could be like eight, nine, nine bucks. Same thing with the sauerkraut. It's, it's on sale a lot though. I get it at Whole Foods, it's on sale all the time. So once again, 10 ounces because I want my 60 grams of protein. You know, if you're a smaller gal and you're watching this, you know, you're taking 30 grams could be enough. So you can go with just four ounces of the shrimp. And once again, I got my blueberries in there. I probably did add a little bit of, of extra virgin olive oil because, you know, I use very little when I saute the shrimp, balsamic vinegar, um, just perfect eating, right? I mean, I mean, I, I think you guys are getting the gist of this. It's such a, um, let me see, is that all the meals? Let me see, I thought I had sardines. Did I have one more? Salmon, I thought I had one more. No, I guess that's it. All right, there we go. So I hope you found this helpful. If anyone's new and they want to jump into intermittent fasting, you know, check it out. I don't think you can go wrong with this plan. Also, if, if you know someone who wasn't able to watch this and you think this might be helpful, definitely share it with them. You know, you know, give them a shout out, see if they like it. And uh, all right. Any other questions, guys, guys? I really appreciate everyone showing up. I'm looking really excited about the Super Bowl tonight. Um, should be a lot of fun. Like I say, my wife's more excited than me. I mean, we're not necessarily big, big football watchers, but since Kansas City is my wife's company's headquarters it should be a lot of fun now there are such they are such fans like literally i don't know if you've been to kansas city ever like on on friday her whole company like dresses in 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 red and in the alpha i mean it's incredible people get married husband and wife dressed in like football jersey they're like incredible incredible football fans <laughs> you know which is really amazing all right so let me get any other questions guys guys i really appreciate everybody showing up you know before i go all right, so have a wonderful day. Let's see. Give me a minute to okay, okay, Jeff has a question. Okay, take your time. I know, I think there's like, what, it's probably like a, I think there's like a two or three minute um, delay. And also, it could be questions about working out. It could be questions about any, anything, anything health, you know, any, anything you want. It doesn't have to necessarily be about this, what we talked about today, what the plan is. Let me get that camera a little bit higher. I guess I really like these contacts. I really, I've been, um, I've been, you know, I've been struggling putting them, putting them on, taking them off, but I really do love it. And uh, you know, so and I feel like now I can, I don't have to worry about getting the glare in my glasses from all these different lights. And I think it's a much better um, presentation. Let's see. I'm, I'm definitely gonna wait for for uh, for Jeff's question. Anyone else? Has anything? Just you know. I'll hang out as, as long as you guys want. I generally go an hour and a half. I've been in like an hour and 17 minutes, so I got plenty of time before. And also, what, what's everyone doing for the Super Bowl today? I'd be curious to know that. What are you going to be eating? Are you really just eating anything you want today for Super Bowl day? I think we're going to get some, um, I think I'm going to order a tray of eggplant parmesan, which is, that's a trigger food for me. But we'll eat it all, you know, tonight because everyone's coming over. So it, sh it should be a lot of fun. Like I said, I'll probably have some potato chips and I'll, it'll be a little bit of a cheat day for me. I'll probably drink some like light beer or something like that. You know, maybe a low carb beer. Let's see, Jeff. I don't think I see, um, I don't know, I hope there's not a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't see a question. I'll, I'll give you another couple of minutes. If not, I'm, if not, I'm gonna run. All right. I think we got, but I think we had a good showing today. I think we had at one point, I think we had about 25 people show up today. I think we averaged about 15, which is kind of nice, which is great. All right. Any other questions? All right, Jeff, I'm going to, I'm going to give it one more minute because I don't want you to, I don't, I don't, I don't want to miss your, uh, miss your question. And maybe we got technical difficulties or something. All right. All right. Sorry guys. I'm going to run. Sorry, Jeff, if, if I miss your question, but I do, you know, I still want to, get things going for, because people are coming over today. But, you know, if, once again, you know, like, give me a thumbs up for this video. Tell any any family or friends who might be interested in not only intermittent fasting, but just losing weight, getting in top shape. Let's see, Chris, thanks again, Mike. Great presentation. Oh, thanks, Chris, you got it. All right, take care, everyone. I really appreciate you showing up. Steve, John, I appreciate you guys showing. Have a wonderful day. Have some fun today with Super Bowl Day. Take care, everybody.